Welcome back to the JSFL. We got the after week nine podcast going into week 10 next week. Uh, let's look at that week nine recap. We had the earthquake at the wind. Uh, earthquake winning this one. I think it was like 24 14. Um, the wind just don't keep up, man. They're just not as good as the earthquake. Uh, earthquake man going to nine and one now. They're um, or eight and one. Sorry. Um, could be nine one after this week, though. Just the most dominant team right now. The pass rush, insane. Um, Jacob Kidd's been doing good for the injured Terry Foster. It's just a great place right now, and they have got their first um, playoff. Of, they're going to have their first playoff appearances here, so good job for L.A. We'll see if they can beat Seattle out, though, for the division. Um, We got the Bismen at Predators in that 1 p.m. game. Bismen just dominated the Predators. Predators just – the quarterback injuries are terrible on them right now. They're just having no one really to – play in Bisman, they could be looking at playoffs. They uh, have an interesting matchup this week to see if they could um, beat the – or to lock up the division maybe. But, well, yeah, we'll see. They are good. Predators looking like not going to be making the postseason. Let's we'll see. Musicians at Enforcers, a nice divisional matchup, really defensive. Uh, Enforcers are going to meek out this win. Musicians kind of falling off a little bit. We'll see if they can pick it up this week. But Enforcers get this win. Natives at Fishers. I don't know what's happening to the Natives. Fishers, they're a pretty solid team. Got a nice quarterback. Solid defense, solid offense. But I felt like the Natives should have won this one by a little bit more. But, um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Was at was at um Minneapolis. But, I don't know. I suspect a little more from the Natives. Maybe they're falling a little too. But, who knows. Power at the Gill Monsters. Absolute domination by the power. Um, Gill Monsters looking on the edge here. Have to win this week or they're going to be eliminated. So, yeah, but the power looking like a good team. But they always do make this late run and they'll end the season to get knocked off in the first round. But if the Gila Monsters aren't there, who knows? Power could maybe do something this year because Gila Monsters aren't looking like they're going to make the playoffs right now. And then for the Monday night prime time, it was the Hounds at the Bats. That was quite a game. Uh, really a b- backyard burner. Um, Charlotte was waiting for a lot of it. Then Hounds came out of nowhere, got the lead. Charlotte tries to make a final drive and throws a pick to Byron Baxter. And yeah, that was week nine. And let's go into the power rankings. First or 12th place is the Atlanta Predators at three and six. Just injuries hurt them and um, just can't really fight through it without those injuries. Ben Hudson not able to steer the ship right now and they're spiraling. 11th is the Charlotte Bats at 5 and 4. Or no, 4 and 5. Don't know where that came from. 4 and 5 for the Bats. Um, We'll see how they're doing. Just doesn't look that great right now, man. They lost to the Hounds, who are 1 and 7. And just, I don't know. They might win the East, though. Who knows? They might go to the playoffs. 10th place is the Gila Monsters, man. They've just been getting counted. Last, this week it was um the Power. Last week, who was it that beat them? Oh, yeah, they played the Power twice in a row, but they got pounded both times. Who did they play before that? The Natives, they lost in the Natives. Just, it's been rough for the Gale Monsters. Tough schedule, but, you know, you expect them to pull out one of those, you know. It's the Gale Monsters. They've won two titles in a row. What do you want? So, they're at 10th. 9th is the Fishers. Just, man, it's the Fishers. They're never doing anything, like, out of the ordinary. They'll win one good game maybe a year, and just, like, they're just, like, an easy game on the schedule for everyone. Uh, eighth is the Cincinnati Hounds at two and seven. Um, fighting for the North, man. They have to win like every game and they have to have the power like suck, but they're fighting, man. The turnover is just bad, and, but they're definitely an explosive team and control it. And the defense does ball out occasionally. So, yeah. Seventh is the Bismen. They're fighting back into this. The defense is really solid. Um, the offense is starting to get together. Maybe Grunette can make some gears change and they can win the East. So we'll see if that happens. Six is the Kansas City wind. There's power there, but like when they go up against the top teams, I'm not expecting them to win anything, you know, but they're, they're definitely a good team. Uh, five is New Orleans musicians. They are falling off a little bit here. Some losses to some teams you would think they would beat or, I mean, they're close with every team. But they're just not pulling these out. And you think maybe it's something in the years with Seth's guys, but I don't know. We'll have to see how this goes for the musicians. Fourth is the Natives. Uh, Kermit Poe, and the, they're struggling a little bit, but they're still number four. I mean, that's nothing bad. 
the Knaves just are in a little bit of a spunk here. We'll see if they can get out of it. Uh, third is the Power Men. They look electric right now. And if they stay healthy, I could see this team making a run, which they could every year, but they've been knocked out in the wild card both rounds, or both years. So we'll see if they can keep this up and keep going. Second is the Enforcers, man. It's just a tough team. It's the Houston Enforcers. You know what you're going to get. It's a really strong defensive team. The offense is coming through. And they have Tracy Davis now. So, yeah, weapons for Warren Jones all around. The run game is always solid. It's just it's the Houston team, man. But an even more solid team with the Houston Force is just a better pass rush. It's the L.A. Earthquake. And, man, L.A. could do it, man. They haven't been to the playoffs, but they're 8-1 and one right now. Uh, Houston 7-2, by the way. And Detroit is 5-4. and four. But, yeah, man, L.A. could definitely do 8-1. Only one loss. They won't. They've been six and six like both years, and this just team just looks great all around. They traded for that first pick in Howard Butler, and he's really doing help. Like if Roland Levis ain't getting there, it's Howard Butler. That quarterback, whoever's playing them, has got to be quick and fast, you know. So yeah, that's the power rankings. The world's MVP race. Tenth is Tony Dackerson, the Minneapolis Fishers quarterback. Ninth is Taylor Little, the running back of uh, the Detroit Power, even though he was injured for a little bit. Eighth is Sean Richardson, the quarterback of the Detroit Power. Seventh is Warren Jones, quarterback of the Houston Enforcers. Sixth is Chris Johnson, the outside linebacker of the Kansas City Wind. Or no, not Kansas City Wind, uh, the New Orleans Positions. Fifth is Chad Harrison, the quarterback of the Kansas City Wind. There we go. Fourth is Brian Tepps, the quarterback of the Phoenix Gill Monsters. Third, Roland Lemus, the edge rusher for um, LA Earthquake. Second is Ross Williams, the halfback for LA Earthquake. And number one is Kermit Poe, looking to go back to back, the quarterback of the Natives, Seattle Natives. Uh, offensive Rookie of the Year, number three is Jacob Kidd of the LA Earthquake, the quarterback. Second is Vincent Morgan, the tight end for the Seattle Natives. And number one is Chad Harrison, the quarterback for the Kansas City Wind. Third in the more, yeah, Kansas City, Chad Harrison is probably going to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. But Defensive Rookie of the Year is a lot more closer. Third place is Lamar Kemp Bell of the New Orleans Musicians. Second place is Zachary Wong, the middle linebacker, or inside linebacker for the Charlotte Bats. And first place right now is Andrew Saunders, the safety for the Cincinnati Hounds. In the playoff picture, right now it's the East is the Charlotte Bats to lose. South is the Houston Enforcers over the LA Earthquake, or not the LA Earthquake, the New Orleans Musicians. So, yeah, wait, hold on. So six and three, and... Seven and two. So if eight and two, hold on, eight and four. No, they can't lock it up this week, but they're two games ahead in the driver's seat right now for that division. Um, South or West is the LA Earthquake. They haven't have it locked up yet, but it's looking pretty good. They're two games ahead as well. And the North, the Detroit Power could seal up the division with the win this week. They would also knock both teams out, I think. No, wait. Fishers could still be in it if they win. But, yeah. Fifth seed is Seattle. Sixth seed is New Orleans. In the hunt right now, number one is Kansas City. Number two is New York Businessmen. Uh, let's look at that injury report to the teams. So... But, yeah, here we go. Got New York. This is updated for this week as well. Aaron Corona back week 12 and Ken Jones back week 11. So two injuries on that offensive line for New York. Charlotte, they got Aaron Hardy. He'll be back on the wild card. Washington Toy will come back this week. So good addition. Not too bad in Charlotte. Um, so Atlanta actually made a trade because uh, who is out? Yeah, Lee Bridges is out. He'll be back week 12. So let's, let's just look at their quarterback injuries. Ben Hudson, back week 12. Joe Parker, back at the championship. And Lee Bridges, back week 12. So they made a trade for um, Carl Carroll's. Or no, not Carl Carroll's. They made a trade to... Shoot, who was it? Gotta look at the... the draft. It was with... Was this guy Hoover? I don't know, but I'm sure you'll figure out during the game. 
because I don't have it right here. But Phoenix got um Carl Carroll's. I believe. I believe Atlanta got Scotty Hoover. If I'm not wrong, but I could be wrong. So you'll see on um, this week, I guess. Brent Ruiz is back week 11. Perry Webb back in the wild card. Trent Savage back in the wild card. And Xander Knox will be back next week, week 11. So a lot of injuries on the Atlanta side. New Orleans, Neil Mendoza will return this week. And Malcolm Perry is out for the season. Enforcers, Hayden McKee returns. Mel Dexter is out till week 12. Eric Prostitt and Warren Jones are out till week 11. And all in Clemens will be back in the divisional. So some injuries on that enforcer side. And I I can't remember. Has Warren Jones been out for a minute? Or is that? I think that's new. So, yeah. Carl White will be starting, I believe. Then we got Phoenix. Humphrey Charles returns. Uh, Dexter Sex out till week 11. And Brian Tepps, I know that one's new. He'll, uh, he's out till week 12. So. The playoff chances to get there is even harder. And Esteban Sylvester's is back to the wit divisional if they make it, and Marcus Johns will be back on the wild card if they make that. Um, the win, Dominic Travi out to week 11. Otis Craig returns this week. Luke Frankie and Craig Schneider also out to week 11, along with Char Sean Martinez. Cody Pollitt returns this week, and Owen Dickerson is out for the season. So... A lot of people return next week. That's good for the Kansas City win if they can win this game. And they get two new defensive players back this week. So, yeah, they've had a lot of people out. I did not notice that. Oh, and Willie Rogers is out until week 12. Yeah, Kansas City might have the most injuries out of anyone. Uh, earthquake. Esteban Andre is suspended for this season. With, um, I don't remember. I'm, I'm sure I'll talk about it the game. Terry Foster out to week 12. Kane Hollister back on the wild card, which they're making, so he'll be back. And Steven Taylor returns this week. Um, Henry Berger back week 10, so he returns this week. William Hexel out to week 12. Joel Cummings net back next week. Ronaldo Smith is out for the season. Ernest Coleman returns this week. And Sheldon Lee will be back in the wild card. Minneapolis, Gerald Aguilar back of the wild card which they might make, who knows. Melvin Carlson, back week 11, so next week. Navon Isten is out for the season. Detroit, Winford Peters, back week 12. And Hugo Bell, back at the championship. David Medina returns this week for Detroit. Big addition back. Cincinnati, Frank Jog, suspended for the season. Darian Piper, back at the championship. If they somehow make it, that'd be a miracle. Lawrence Bush, back next week. And Carlton Soto. Back of the wild card if they make it. So, yeah, that is the injury report. And now we go to. Oh, I didn't do leaders this week. We won't have leaders and stuff like that. But let's do the offensive player of the week. Offensive player of the week for number, week number nine was Ross Williams. He had 19 attempts, 157 yards, two touchdowns, and six broken tackles. Receiving, he had five receptions for 25 yards, 54 points altogether. And defensive player of the week, Byron Baxter, three solo tackles, seven assists, one TFL, two interceptions. So he had 28 points, a really low week for defenders. I think that's a year low. It is. That's the lowest anyone scored all season for to be DPOY. Oh, not DPOW. So, yeah, and then we got offense and defense. So, let's get into that. Offense, number 12, number 12 is the businessmen. 11th, Predators. 10th, Fishers. 9th, Wind. 8th, Bats. 7th, Gale Monsters. 6th, Musicians. 5th, Hounds. 4th, Earthquake. 3rd, Enforcers. 2nd, Natives. 1st, Power. Rush offense, 12th, Bats. 11th, Wind. 10th Musicians, 9th Businessmen, 8th Earthquake, 7th Predators, 6th Fishers, 5th Natives, 4th Gale Monsters, 3rd Hounds, 2nd Enforcers, and 1st Power. Pass Offense, 12th Businessmen, 11th Predators, 10th Fishers, 9th Gale Monsters, 8th is Enforcers, 7th Hounds, 6th Power, 5th Musicians, 4th Bats, 3rd Wind, 2nd Natives, and 1st Earthquake. 
12th for, for defensive now. 12th is the wind, 11th hounds, 10th bats, 9th fishers, 8th riders, 7th natives, 6th power, 5th earthquake, 4th gill monsters, 3rd businessmen, 2nd enforcers, 1st musicians. Rush defense, 12th hounds, 11th gill monsters, 10th bats, 9th businessmen, 8th fishers, 7th natives, 6th wind, 5th predators, 4th earthquake, 3rd musicians, 2nd power, 1st enforcers. Pass defense, 12th wind, 11th predators, 10th power, 9th fishers, 8th bats, 7th natives, 6th earthquake, 5th businessmen, 4th hounds, 3rd enforcers, 2nd musicians, and 1st gill monsters, even though, or never mind. Yeah, okay, don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, that's it for everything. Now we just got my week 10 predictions, and we go with the 10th schedule. So Thursday night, we got you with the divisional matchup, a lot of divisional matchups this week. Gill Monsters at Earthquake. Gill Monsters need this to stay in, but man, the way they've been playing, the way the Earthquake been playing, I gotta go with the Earthquake. Uh, expect a defensive score. I'm thinking like a 16, 16 9. Nah, 16, 16 7 with the earthquake winning. Give a little score prediction. Bats at businessmen. Ooh, I think businessmen come out with this one, but I think it's going to be a big score. Give me a 31 30 businessman. Hounds at Fishers. I told you a lot of divisional matchups. Um, gosh, the Hounds are good, but man, they turn over the ball and the Fishers are just solid. Give me a 24-14 Fishers win. Enforcers at power for the 415 matchup. Or 430 matchups. Um mm, that's good. You know. I think the power take this one. 2117. I'm gonna give it to the power at home. The wind at the natives. You know, I think the wind are gonna upset it. Give me the win, man. At, on the road, going to to Seattle. I'm going to give it to the wind. Let's go with 28-21 wind. And the Monday night matchup could be a slaughter. Could be close to the way the musicians are playing. Predators at musicians. But I'm going to take the musicians 28-13. So yeah, that is it for before week 10, after week 9, whatever you want to call it, podcast. I've been your commentator, commissioner, and player Joshua Hexel, and I'll see you week 10.